$100,000 a year is $8,333 a month, $1,923 per week, and $273 a day. Now, in today's economy, $100,000 is apparently only worth $36,000, but still, to my surprise, I was able to cross that sweet six-figure income line that I once thought was impossible. So in this video, I want to show you guys how exactly I was able to achieve this at an age of 21. To do this, we need to go back to year 2013, the year of inception. I've moved to Canada from South Korea to basically learn how to speak English. Everything felt so new and daunting but I knew I had to start somewhere. So every day after school I would go to the library and read whatever book that I could find and write down every single word that I didn't know onto my notebook. So for the next three years I repeated this process and did everything in my power to learn English. What I learned. Everything is possible if you just put in the work. Year 2015 slash 2016. In 2015, I started high school and by now I was pretty fluent in English, had a lot of close friends, and most importantly, had a very bad haircut. This was also the year I started getting really good grades, won a couple of Waterloo math competitions, racked up credits with extracurricular activities, and I really started to see some fruition of my hard work that I put in for the past three years. So given my qualification, I had also been approved from my high school to skip grade nine calculus and start with grade 10 calculus from the start of my high school life. So I was always taking math classes that were a year more advanced than my age. I was also the first freshman to get accepted to the top orchestra in my school and finally I was the first one in my school history to get an award for finishing number one in my calculus class while being a year younger than everyone else in my class. What I learned Life is what you make of it. So if you want your life to be extraordinary, you have to put in an extraordinary amount of work as well. Year 2018, the year of choices. This was my final year in high school and I had finally got rid of my bad haircut. By then, I actually had enough credits to graduate a year early, but I decided not to because I wanted to enjoy my high school life. And in hindsight, that was a very good decision. I had a 97% average and I was done school every day by 11 a.m. because as I said I didn't need any more credits to graduate so I was only taking AP calculus and a couple of random classes however this was actually perfect because one I could spend more time with my friends and two because it gave me more time for my internship at that time I was one of only 10 students across my province to have the opportunity to intern at my provincial legislative assembly. I was getting paid around $16 an hour back when the minimum wage was $11 in my province and I thought I was balling out. So naturally, the first purchase I made with my first paycheck was an OVO sweatshirt that costed me $200 at that time. Now, obviously, because I was in my high school year, I had to decide what I wanted to study and where I wanted to go. Here, my internship came in very clutch because I was able to talk to a lot of very successful politicians, and that's when I noticed that 80% or more of these politicians had a business degree, and that's when I decided that I was going to study business for my undergrad degree. So in the fall of 2018, I applied to both UBC Sauter and U of T Rotman and got accepted to both and I decided to attend Rotman. What I learned, surround yourself with people you can learn from and network with people who are already producing the results you want. Year 2019, the six. Moving to a new city, meeting new friends and starting university was a little daunting at first, but nonetheless, I quickly made a lot of great friends and actually became the first year president at my college. I had also started interning at the biggest and the oldest club at Rotman, started my YouTube channel, and finally, to my surprise, I had gotten a lot of scholarships and grants to a point where I didn't have to pay for the rest of my four years of tuition. So for a brief second, I thought U of T was actually manageable. That was until I experienced my first midterm season. During my first midterm season, I had gotten grades that I had never gotten before 
and that meant I had to grind on my studies once again. Luckily, I was able to finish the year with a decent GPA and got into the Dean's List. However, I was too busy trying to not get kicked out of my school during my first year that I could not find an internship during that summer. So for my first year summer, I just relaxed and made some YouTube videos. What I learned. Everything in business is interrelated with one another. Whether it's accounting, economics, marketing, management, or finance, if you wanna be good at something in business, you have to be good at everything. Year 2020. Now, as you guys know, I started doing online school this year, but that was actually a blessing in disguise because I was able to fully dedicate my time into my studies. During this time, I was taking a lot of econ classes, which included one of the hardest economics courses in my school and lots of accounting and management courses as well. I was also working at my university, which helped to build my resume a little bit as well. Overall, in my second year, I learned a lot academically but again, because I was so focused on getting the best GPA possible, I had once again missed my chance to land any real internships. So during that summer, I took some summer courses and really geared up to prepare for my third year internship and promised myself to work even harder. What I learned, don't make excuses for anything. Own up to the fact that the only thing stopping you from achieving your dreams is yourself. Year 2021. The year I went from a tech bro wannabe to a finance bro. Learning from my previous mistake of the past year, I landed a solid internship at Amazon at the start of my third year. So after I accepted the internship offer, I just stopped looking for internships and focused on my school, which in hindsight was another big mistake. This is because back at school, I decided to load up my year with bunch of finance courses and this was the year that I realized that I really enjoy finance. Finance. I was also awarded with the CFA student scholarship and through this I was introduced to more advanced financial and accounting techniques and that's when I ultimately decided that I was going to pursue my career in finance and not in tech. So before my internship had even started, I had lost a bit of my passion towards my internship. Nonetheless, my internship went well. I was getting paid around $30 an hour, working 40 hours a week, and Amazon was kind enough to pay for all my housing and transportation costs, which included my flight tickets and my personal car for the summer as well. At the end of that summer, I got a return offer, but I decided to reject it because by then it was clear to me that my passion lay more towards finance. What I learned, never be scared to change your career path. There are multiple ways to get to where you want to be from where you are today. Year 2022 to present moment. Consulting 101. If you were to ask any first year business school students on what they wanna do when they graduate, they will all give you the same exact response. Consulting or investment banking? For me, that answer was consulting. For my fourth year, I loaded up my enrollment card with the hardest finance courses offered for my school because those courses were pretty much a revision of what I learned from my CFA preparations. It's not an over-exaggeration when I say that I learned more from my CFA than my internship during my third year summer. Then around October, I started doing a couple of interviews and shortly after that, I actually landed a consulting job which will lead to $100,000 plus a year salary that I have today. So thanks to CFA, I finished my final year with my first ever 4.0 annual GPA, my dream job, and finally in June of 2023, I had officially graduated from University of Toronto, Rotman Commerce with high distinction. What I learned, when you focus on being the best version of yourself, everything else in life will follow. Conclusion, 2023 marks exactly 10 years since I moved to Canada and a lot has changed since then. So no matter where you are in life, if you wanna see changes in your life, you have to be the one to change them. So work hard and if you still don't see any changes in your life, that means you need to work harder because the only thing that is stopping you from achieving your dream is yourself.